talk to us first and foremost about you know the progress you made so far how how much you're really looking to be offsetting some of the impact of the businesses that you currently help the network and movement of funds contribute to climate change perhaps withdraw some of that Right. So we sort of start with the science in order to hit global warming targets. We need to do two things. One, we need to stop emitting in the first place. And two, we need to remove carbon dioxide that's already in the atmosphere and ocean. We're going to need to do a huge amount of both, but we are particularly behind on the second in part because you know, we didn't really realize we were going to need to do as much carbon removal as we now know we do. Um, and so our focus so far at you know, Stripe has been with Stripe Climate. This started with a small corporate commitment. It's expanded to make it easy for many Stripe users to direct a fraction of their revenue to carbon removal, which we then pulled together and used it to buy even more carbon removal down the cost curve. But despite this current progress, we are still not at all on track to scale carbon removal uh, to the required mm. gigatons we need by 2050. And Frontier is really an attempt to get carbon removal on its best possible trajectory so that we have collectively the suite of solutions that we need to hit net zero uh, in the coming decades. Talk to us about how the fund came together. Uh, it came together initially from, you know, the, the genesis was really from, from internally the Stripe Climate Team looking at the science and saying, well, we, while we have made a lot of progress, we have a long way to go. How do we really bend the curve up um, for carbon removal, knowing that we cannot do this just by ourselves. Mm. Um, and so this really sort of formed the impetus of going out and starting to talk to a number of companies of, you know, how do we send a really loud demand signal to the industry of carbon removal that there is going there are going to be buyers for this tech, yeah. that, for this technology, which really has been um, the missing link so far uh, that, that has sort of paralyzed carbon removal in many ways. Talk to us about the startups that are tackling just this. How do you analyze them? How do you evaluate the impact that they're going to have? Yes. So we are starting to see a really diverse set of companies that are attempting carbon removal. And they're all over the map, right? So everything from traditional direct air capture, um, like Climeworks, which is, kind of looks like these giant fans pulling CO2 out of the air and injecting it underground into basalt rock where it mineralizes. We have... Um, uh, running Tide, which is doing kelp sinking, essentially growing these large columns of, of kelp biomass in the ocean and then sinking that to the bottom where it stays there forever. Um, and then, you know, Charm Industrial is another example. They're taking waste biomass like corn stover, turning it into bio oil and injecting it back underground. We're seeing a huge amount of diversity in the kinds of um, approaches to this. And that is exactly what we need. We need an order of magnitude, more attempts here so that we have this portfolio that is going to collectively get to the 6 billion tons we need by 2050 every single year. I hate to ask an awkward question, but it's one that at the moment perhaps some people see when they see Stripe and investing and, and the fact that perhaps the previous series and rounds that you invested in one company didn't go completely right. How do you ensure you got the right founder in place? How do you ensure that you got all the right sort of driving factors behind a business? So I'll, I'll, I'll make one sort of important distinction, which is in the case of Frontier and in the case of Stripe Climate, we are buying carbon removal. So think of us like the customer. We're not oh. taking an equity stake in these companies. And this is really stems from the fact that, you know, when ener with energy, for example, there is an end user of energy. We consume energy and humans derive value from that. With carbon removal, there's no intrinsic buyer because, you know, we're putting it under the ground and storing it there permanently. So nobody has historically wanted to buy carbon removal, especially when it's early and expensive. And the, you know, as a result, if you're a founder, why would you start a company if, mm. uh, if nobody is going to buy the thing that you're selling? If you're an investor, why would you invest in a company that doesn't have a revenue stream? So our really our theory of change here is, if we are the customer, we can use that to pull project finance, uh, and we can use it to pull more founders into the space. So I'll just draw that distinction between these two companies. The other point I'll make is that you know, this field is early and we should expect a number of these companies to not work. And that's okay. That is what an early ecosystem looks like. And I think we all need to collectively prepare for a lot of innovation. Some of these will work and some of these won't, but let's learn that now. Let's figure that out now so that by 2030, we feel more confident in the companies that we really wanna double down on to scale up. 